Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And in the previous episode, we spent a great deal of time burying the railway network. And today we're going to continue iterating on that. We are going to have a few road diets and spend some time making this area more pedestrian and bicycle friendly. Uh, in addition, we're going to check out a couple of things um, related to our cargo situation <laughs> and try to make sure that we are on steady footing there. And we are going to take a look at our bicycle highway and see if there's anything we can do to improve it now that we have a ton more space. What I'm thinking is we have an opportunity to make a really special park through here. Um, but before we get to that, I want to get to the warehouses and answer a few comments that I saw in, uh, in for the previous video. Uh, but first, let's, let's do the warehouse thing. So what I was thinking, so if we come back over here and we take a look, we will see that we're still having goods issues. And I think this is a problem with my warehouse setup. So I, I've tested this and I got this to resolve. The way that I was able to do it was to come through and set all of these to fill. So I'm gonna come through any of my general goods warehouses and set these to fill. Now what this is telling the game is import goods. Import as many as you can. So I'll do that right now. Okay, so any of my zoned industry I've set to fill. You look over here and we're actually in a very good spot. So I think this is drawing a lot of traffic off the highway and dropping the goods off here. Now I am noticing that we've got some issues here with our junctions that we don't really need. There's no warrant for a signal there, so we'll get rid of that. And we'll just have a stop sign. That'll be just fine. So eventually, it'd be really nice to get a rail connection over here. Um, this will be a difficult one, though. So um, for the time being, we're just going to leave that. But I do want to come back over here. And you might have seen me just click over here. What I want to do is we have this circulation pattern. And I think we have a space for some warehouses. And what I'd like to do is just reconfigure our roads a bit. We're going to use some eminent domain. Actually, we're not even going to use eminent domain. We're just going to reconsider our decision making and fix this. So let's go ahead. We'll smooth this out. And what we're going to do is make a connection over here and start to form the backbone of a transportation network in this area. So I'm going to eliminate some of these things for the time being. We'll bring them back in just a moment. Now, it's unfortunate this is no longer situated in a way that makes it easy for me to, to work with. I'm going to turn off my road guidelines and hopefully that will help me. Looks pretty straight right there. Perfect. And then I just want to pull this through. And we're going to give ourselves some connectivity through here. There we go. This is a little bit ugly. We'll clean some of this up in just a moment. But right now, the part that I care about the most is creating this area where we can have some warehouses. So I want to look at this and we are going to get very liberal with our use of sloping the terrain. Now, my the rationale for including warehouses here, uh, I'd love to have a frontage road. I don't think I have space without relocating this. And I don't know how reasonable that is. So we're going to try a couple of things. I don't want these loading off this collector over here. So we are going to just go ahead and place the warehouses on this road or add a frontage road to that. And that, that there's a lot of traffic on that road. So let me see if this is enough space. And you see it's, it's backing up to there a little bit. Now that's not going to be any good. We'll provide an outlet here. So now you could reasonably come in through here, exit there, and then we can fill the rest in with warehouses. I think that'll do the trick. That'll that'll work for us. Okay, so I wanted to spin this around and point this towards this road. We are going to use one ways in a couplet right here. And the main reason for that is we just want to make sure that there is a circulation here. We'll leave this bi-directional. We'll see how it works. It may not work all that well. We might need to take take a step back on that. And wow, we'll need to fix these. 
We don't want those underneath. We don't want those underneath the buildings. And now we should take a look at our, our traffic patterns here. This isn't going to work well for us. And, ooh, that is ugly. That is very ugly. We're going to need to cover that up. I think we went with the right situation and solution for us here, but that doesn't mean that it's great 100% of the time. I'm going to set these to fill as well. So we want to import goods if we need them. And then we'll cover up some of these lumpies and bumpies. I can't, I can't leave this like that. Now here, I think we need to go back to our sloping tools. We, we, we can still fix this. Okay, that is looking much better. And I'm just gonna decorate this a little bit. Not, I mean, it's an industrial area, but that doesn't mean it needs to feel quite as bad as it does. Okay, so I wanna speed this up to see if our traffic patterns are gonna get wild. And I, I'm not sure what to add right here. Uh, I don't want anything generating traffic. So it might just be a place where, you know, we're gonna speed this up and I'm gonna decorate this. Okay, so the traffic flow here seems to be okay. I just wanna see, are we getting some goods here? Look at that, 65% of the way full. Over here, one, six, one. I'm gonna take that, I think that's a good thing. I think that we're at least getting some traction here with goods being being filled up now i know that this is going to cause some significant traffic problems here and eventually i think we're going to need to reimagine the entire bob ross memorial interchange but that is a project for another day we're going to move on and i want to really think about what i did here because i did some things that weren't great and I, they were pointed out a number of times in the comments so uh, a couple of things so richard uh, Rich Richard asked, uh, instead of the new underground rail, why not make an extensive metro system? One of the main reasons I didn't do that is this. Uh, with an extensive metro system, I'd have to abandon Central Station. I didn't really want to do that. I could certainly feed it all right here. That's just not really what I was excited to do. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we have all of this underground rail. If I had um, the network multi-tool, I would unlock these platforms and swap them over to Metro and I would have upgraded this all to Metro. I think that makes sense. We've basically turned this all into a Metro, but that's why. Um, and then there was another comment saying, uh, this is from Jacob Middleberg asking basically, you know, why I didn't turn these all into parks. He says, I have to say I'm a little disappointed. It's great to clear up those old rail, rail tracks and free up space. However, I would have loved to see larger priority on bike facilities and little park instead of another massive road. The government district seems largely disconnected from the rest of the city. Still a very entertaining episode. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for being so polite, Jacob. And I agree. There is, I, I think that I was a little conservative on the roadway network here and I didn't put as much emphasis as I could have on bike connectivity. So we're going to do that. And to do that, we're going to be less conservative. In reality, if this were happening uh, and, and we redid these roads through here, you'd be okay with some redevelopment. These buildings are hundreds of years old at this point um, and not, not all buildings are built to last 100 years. In fact, you'll often hear about the life expectancy of a building and uh, th these are likely past the end of their useful life. We are going to make some changes. The other thing I was thinking about is this is the government district and none of these buildings have been upgraded. We brought in some of the European buildings and our government district is really fairly small. So we're going to add in some new government buildings. Our first time adding unique buildings to the downtown in quite some time. So one of the things that I want to do is just redo some of these roadway connections. And in this area, I'd love to just, and I paused it because I want, I'd love to just pop this down. It's not going to do it for me. So we're going to try something. These are all offices. I'm going to sever that connection. We're going to recreate it. Same thing here. So there's not a, we're going to have to redevelop basically this entire block and I'm here for it. I think it's okay. No, I think ideally we would have made a connection here 
but we're going to try to preserve as many of the existing buildings as we can. So part of this is going back through and rezoning and hoping that these buildings preserve are, are, are preserved rather. Can't guarantee that, but we'll see. All right, so we're just going to see. We're going to let this go and we'll see what disappears and what doesn't. So I think some of these are going to stick around and it looks like we're in a good spot there. A lot of them aren't disappearing. So we were able to avoid the game's mechanics, <laughs> which is, oh, oh, oh that one had to go. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Now we've got all this new space, this extra space, and I'd love to bring in some new unique buildings. And then we'll focus on road diets and our bike network. So in particular, we have a courthouse that Verde Beach still doesn't have a courthouse, which is kind of interesting. And this, this right here, government offices. So to me, this is a great fit in this area. And you know, it's very European looking, but truth be told, a lot of American government buildings are very European looking. So, um, and I, I think that's kind of hearkening back to the old power structures and, and things of that nature. Um, Greek architecture and a lot of European architectures worked into these buildings. So we're going to include that, which means that we spent all this time preserving some of these buildings only to demolish them, <laughs> which I think is, is perfectly acceptable in this particular instance where we're redeveloping to add in a new government building. Let's give some space here. We don't need to cram everything in. In fact, we can get rid of some of these buildings altogether or some of these trees. Now we really focused on pedestrianism through here and we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna give it one tile spacing. Let's turn on our grid, which will help us ensure that these are very, very straight. And then I wanna control my zoning again. So I, I wanna either front this street or this one, not both. So I'm going to put a fence right here to clean up our zoning and right here. And I think we're gonna create a small park here. So this is going to be just a very small park, nothing overly dramatic. Okay, so we're gonna create a small park here. We have to have a main gate. That's fine, we'll have it right next to this. And let's make sure the shape makes sense. And I already have a name for this. So we're gonna call this Deanna Crescent. So this is in honor of uh, one of my community development director patrons, uh, mother-in-laws who recently passed, Jonathan Irvin. Uh, she really liked flowers and we're gonna make this a very colorful and flower-filled park. So let's go ahead and add in flowers to start out with. And what we'll do is just line this whole entryway, this whole path with flowers. I wanna make sure I'm picking the right ones. And I'm just gonna go down the edge here and we'll just line the whole thing. And we're a little bit too close here, but I think that's okay because you'd be able to walk through here. Um, let's also add in a special tree and a bench. Think of this as a place where maybe Deanna would have gone and uh, maybe this was her favorite tree in the city. Then over here, let's give it just a little bit more prominence. We'll add one more light. And I think we need some sort of sign. Well, that's not really going to work, <laughs> so we'll skip the sign. Uh, that said, we need to add in a bit more around here to give this a feeling of seclusion. Okay, so we've made a nice little park here. And, uh, you know, I'm really sorry for your loss, uh, Jonathan, yours and your wife's loss. But I hope that this little park is a nice remembrance for her all right so let's keep moving along here and we need to fill in some of our zoning now that we have focused everything on this road i think that it's appropriate to come back through and zone some of these areas so this road right here in particular 
was very concerning to a number of people. Uh, so I want to give it a road diet. And the first thing I want to do is I want to see there are no transit routes there, but there's no reason why there couldn't be. So what we are going to do is go ahead and look at our options here. And I just want to look at all of our routes. So we have this stuff happening here. It's, it's pretty weird. It doesn't make a lot of sense, the bus route. It's really focusing on accessibility to destinations without really serving them very well. So what we're gonna do is loop this back around here, have a little bit of a road diet. This collector is, is kind of intense in terms of its capacity for no apparent reason. And with that, we can reroute some of this to the back end where it'll be a little bit friendlier to be a pedestrian. And if we're gonna provide accessibility, give people stops instead of circuity. <laughs> so that will be the way that we approach this. So there we go. So now we're looping around this district, getting some of the traffic off from here. Now this intersection is one of the busiest in the city. And as a result, getting some of those buses and getting them off this road where things are already kind of gummed up is going to be a good thing. Now, uh, there were a lot of comments made about this road right here and the excess capacity. Keller House is, it's overbuilt. So we're not going to give up our right away, but we are going to take this down to a two lane road, which might sound extreme, but there's just no traffic here. And I'm going to, I'm going to change this and then we'll upgrade our trees. And then I'll run this for a minute and we'll see if things break down. Because I assume that they're going to be just fine. Except for that, the tree popping up right through the path. I don't like that. We're going to need to figure something out there. The height of realism is destroying a path so that you can get a tree through there. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> there we go. It's not perfect, but it's significantly better. All right, so let me run this for just a moment, and we're going to see what the traffic looks like here. Yeah, and it's completely fine. Uh, in fact, I think this will bear itself out. If we take a look at our traffic routes, I think we're going to see most of the traffic turning left here. Yep, <laughs> everything is going right down the center of the government district. So if we were going to upgrade capacity anywhere, this would probably be the spot, and I don't even know that that's warranted. There's even a left hand movement here that's pretty significant yeah look at that that is a freight route oh yeah we're gonna need to look at this route we may need to use our asymmetric roads to increase the capacity here if we look at their traffic yeah look at that this is a desire path and we if, if i had two you four lane roads we'd probably remove all of our parking and inc increase the capacity here this is functioning as a collector and you see it, there's just a lot of freight traffic through here. So we are gonna definitely target a couple of lanes here. So we'll come through here. Yeah, that's that's helpful. Well, that will be helpful eventually. Although I am curious, there's more traffic heading in here. So maybe having two lanes so that you're not, yeah, I think that's probably a better solution. Over here, let's just make sure things aren't coming up. It's funny, it looks so busy. When you look at your traffic routes, then you come down here and you see no traffic. <laughs> so what are you going to do? All right. So this was completely fine. I want to look at this area because I think I was a little bit unimaginative in this area. We have an opportunity to make a special place in our downtown and ensure that our traffic capacity is taken care of as, as best as it can be. So. What we're going to do is create a, a collector couplet coming into this collector here. This is going to be a challenge because of some of the vanilla mechanics. And I'm wondering if I have to turn angle off and just force this thing through. Now I'll turn angle back on, send this back down, and then we'll have a bit of cleanup. So just a little mulligan, which is a good way to start your day. So we've got a significant slope right there. We're going to need to calm some of these down. We also have our lowest density building in the downtown area, a crematorium blocking our roadway connection. We're going to reimagine that as well. 
And all of this is gonna be really helpful because we're gonna have some bike connections that we add through here as well. And let's temporarily relocate this or at the double crematorium, just what everyone wants. <laughs> just is perfect. All right, so we'll come through here, slope this. Oh, that's much better. I'm gonna send this down. We are gonna turn on our grid now. So I wanna line this up nicely here. And now, so we have this path meeting here. We're gonna to wanna to reconnect that. We're gonna use eminent domain in this little building here. And then what we're gonna do is just pop out this just a little ways. And now we can form a very nice vanilla connection here. So using our curved road tool to make those connections. So this is going to be our couplet here. And I want to make sure that my directionality lines up with the road because then it'll get rid of the traffic signals. There we go. That is great. And now I'll relocate this behind where it was before. Very, very nice. Now, what are we going to do with all this land? We've got a couple of ideas. So we've got a rail museum. And I think it would really be nice to honor the legacy of what used to be here by adding in the rail museum. And we've got some legacy uses back here that I think we're going to need to relocate and think about the way that these fit in. So first of all, we got we got an empty space here with no zoning. That is great. We're going to move our crematorium over here. And this bus depot, which has 26 buses in use, is actually fairly lightly used for what we have here. So we're going to eliminate this. We'll add some pressure to our other depots. And uh, it'll be just fine. Now let's look at our terrain here. So we, we know that we're uh, situating this in the best place it could be situated. And right in the center here, whoa, that is a slope. That is a slope. I don't know that we can do much about it, but boy, I hate that. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to fix this. Okay, that's a lot better. So I'm glad that, that we took the time to do it right. All right, so back here, if I could center this, I'd be very happy. So let's raise the terrain just a little bit back here. And then we'll center this. And maybe it's not as exciting to go train spotting right here. And we've got some lumpies and bumpies. But I think it, it does have some synergy to come through here. And at least watch the trains come off their platform. So we aren't going to have any landscaping here to preserve those, those uh, views for anyone who would be interested in seeing that. We are going to clean some stuff up back here. Now, the other thing, we've talked a lot about our goods issues. We have an opportunity there as well. Uh, this area, if I recall correctly, this whole area is an IT district. Let's take a look at our district. Yes. So we are just going to extend this back. And in between here, we're going to leave in some park space. And now that Keller House has been turned into a fairly low density road. We could zone along here if we want to, but I think we're going to avoid it. We'll maintain what we've been doing. We'll bring some fences back here and then make sure that we have some nice connections to get back through. And we might as well clean some of this up. We've got a lot of ugliness back here, uh, but while we're back here, let's just make sure that we're, we're doing what we can to make the city look as good as it can. This is a high value area, so you'd imagine that the amount of investment in this area would be commensurate, commensurate with that. And I think that we're going to need to, I think that we're going to need to formalize this as a park. Let's just make this an actual city park, which will help with land values. Like I mentioned, high land value area. And then we can use some of our leveling paths, which will really be helpful back here considering all of the struggles that we're going to have with these buildings coming through. There we go. We'll have to hide some of the lumpies and bumpies, but the other advantage this gives us is if we take a look, we've got no real flat areas, which is fine, but we could add a couple of gazebos or something like that. Maybe just one, <laughs> just one. We've got our gazebo and let's go ahead and add in some landscaping back here to clean it up. Uh, 
Okay, so nothing really significant, but a nice place to get away. And if you were back here on your lunch break, it would be a place that you would really cherish. And since this is an employment district, that's really what this is all about. This is a place where people will grab lunch. We'll make some connectivity with our water pipes through here and then add in a bit of landscaping around this park as well. Really minimal, but we're gonna do it anyway. Okay, so there we go. And through this area, we can have some of these larger buildings as well. I want to extend our trail. We don't have it along this road anymore, or our, our fence rather. So we'll add this back through. Make sure we do not destroy this path, which we have to reconnect. And then we can zone along here as well. So all of this is helping us recoup some of the value here, because a lot of this is city-owned land. So as we build all this infrastructure, very expensive, this is a way that we can get some of that value back. Not only are we getting it on the tax side, because obviously a city's always thinking about that, but we're also directly getting some of this value back by selling some of this land. So there we go. Very nice. So this will help with our goods, uh, delivery issues. It'll extend that back downtown back a little bit further. Look at this, it just feels wonderful. It's like you have a little bit of nature right in the middle of your downtown core. So I love that, that is great. Now let's give some real serious thought to our bike network. We've got a couple of road diets. I think we're good for now. So we've got a lot of things going on here. First of all, we've got this fence, <laughs> which this fence used to go along the rail corridor. And now that the rail corridor is gone, it's just doing some things. So I wanna be surgical about this and think about where people are going. Now, I think that the bike highway, I mean, that's really where people are going. Interestingly, no one's going over here. And when they are going here, it's the cut through <laughs> to get across. That is weird. Uh, so uh, this is a failure. We have an opportunity now to make a, a significant connection. So why don't we go ahead and do that? What we'll do is use this as an opportunity to make a bike connection, maybe to here. And I think our bike network extends. It's right here, it kind of cuts off. So you can't get through here. So I think that we could make our bike network connect through this road, maybe even sever this connection and have a bike path through here and make a nice direct connection, which will bring us to Fireman's Park. So for this, I'm just gonna have my angle on we may toggle back and forth with road guidelines from here every now and then. Now this terrain is a challenge, so I wanna focus on it. Because these are not self-leveling, we need to be very careful. And the bikers are gonna get some calves through here and that's fine. <laughs> so uh, here I think we're gonna elevate this up so that we don't have to deal with some of the terrain challenges here. So we've got that in a one elevation step. And now I'm gonna turn my road guidelines back on and go to the curved road tool and try to meet up nicely with this junction there. That is nice. We gotta clean some things up here. Really don't like what's happening here. We're, we're gonna fix this as well. So the height of realism is destroying a path to make a bridge. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? You work with the game, not against it. And we're gonna let perfect be the enemy of good here. And that's fine in this instance. You know what? Here's how we're going to do this. If we're already going hyper unrealistic in this area by making bridges where none are warranted, that is, or where none are needed, where maybe we know that we would prefer to not bridge, we might as well clean up our terrain a bit and really do a good job. I just want to see how smooth that is. It goes up a little bit higher than I would prefer. I'd prefer, yeah. <laughs> I'd prefer that it's not doing that. There we go. It's not perfect, but it's better. Uh, move it would absolutely improve this. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave it. 
it's never perfect with the vanilla pads. You can do your best and uh, have no regrets. Like you're Ash Ketchum. Or, or someone battling Ash, rather. Now here, this road is totally unnecessary. And I want to think about why we have some connections. It's nice to have connectivity. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes we need to prioritize bicycle and pedestrian activity over that. And this is one of those situations where now we'll remove a conflict point here, a barrier with uh, bikes and peds. Obviously, I think that, you know, it'd be great to have a bridge across here. That's just not reasonable. We will signalize this and then we'll come through here and upgrade this. Now we have that really nice connection right through there. Uh, so let's go ahead in vanilla if you want to make this a nice signalized junction. We have two different road types here already. So that's helpful because of what we did here, adding the turn, or the, adding the dual lane here. So you can have the dual left into here, or the dual right. And now we can go ahead and add a junction here. Perfect. So now if you were coming through, push the button, cross the road, lovely. We've already got a cyclist using this. Now I'm curious, how is this being utilized? Look at that. Look at all of that utilization. Just one targeted connection, huge difference. This, <laughs> all that futzing around and no one even cares <laughs> because this connection is so much more valuable. Now we need to get people, because now we've, we've extended this over and you can't get into the government district here. So this, oh, ooh, what happened here? It's like I missed this. We'll turn angle on, there we go. And let's make sure we don't have a, a cost to enter. There we go. Uh, now, if you were a cyclist, you could come through here. You could bike here if you wanted, but then you get stuck. And you're on the sidewalks. Where are you going? What I think we're gonna do is add some connections. So again, you get stuck here, you get stuck here. We need to get back to this road. I think we're gonna add bike lanes all the way through here, which stinks because we lose our trees but we've got a path right here and I think it's going to be a valuable connection for us. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here again, we're going to get cute with the game. And what we're going to do is pause it, leave our angle on, sever this, bring this up to our path. And then we're going to add a tree lined road for our connection. So we get our, our little crossing there which will make this a, 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 a connection that can actually be utilized. It's a little more challenging here, and I don't know that we're going to add this because we're going to end up with lots of craziness going on through here. But at least now we have a path. Truthfully, now that I'm looking at this, we don't need to get all the bike, bikers onto one of the busiest roads in the, in the community. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to bring them behind the road and then up here, and then I'm going to add a bike connection right here. We're going to, the height of realism, using eminent domain for a bike connection. <laughs> it's actually illegal in my state. So it's kind of one of those fun things. There we go. So now you'd be able to cross here, get on up there. And this will fix some of the weird, I don't know what happened here with the zoning, but it'll, it'll resolve some of that. And then we need to fix this and upgrade our trees through here. Now, I love the way the coconut trees look here, but I've been told how bad that is. So we'll go with these. And those are really tall. They are, but I like the way it feels. So we're going to go with it. Let's get this moving again. And I want to look, we've got a whole bunch of signalization through here that we don't need. And then signalization that we're going to add so the bikers can get across the street. Same thing here. We'll add this. Prioritize those cyclists. Let them get across. And then here, we're going to do the exact same thing. So this isn't because it's needed for cars. We're adding it because of the bikers. I think that's a good thing. There we go. Very good. So now you could reasonably get all the way over here. But I'm noticing that if we had one more connection, we could get all the way across here as well. So let's continue this bike route right to there. So now if you're a cyclist, 
you can pull up here and get around here and then you get dumped off. So this is not, this is a multi-use path, which is fine. Where could you go from here? Our bike network kind of ends. Interesting. So I'm trying to see where this goes and I don't see another bike route through here. Oh, right over here, we've got lanes. So let's add back through here, lanes. So there we go. And we're gonna clean this up. This is a really ugly bridge. And I think that we can do better. So I'm gonna leave this multi-use because I think that it's a really key connection. We're gonna start out with the place that's gonna be the most difficult to get across. On the side where it's gonna be the most difficult to get up there. And now we can come through and have a nice connection here. And that is much lower. Oh, and we cut through that tree. That's okay, we'll get rid of that there. And here, can now just bump this down. We have our nice connection there. Looking much better. There we go, there's our solution. And just a bit of cleanup through there. I'm wondering how this connection's working now. So this is a, a significant route at this point. So hopefully we would see some good activity through here. The other thing I'm noticing is we have another opportunity right here. This isn't great, but I think that we might make that. But let's take a look. And all of those kind of uh, teal are bikers. So we're seeing it get some good utilization and they're following the route that we put together. So are the peds, so that's, that's good. So now here, you get to the government district and we're in this area. And if you wanted to go up, you can't really. So here's what we're gonna do. We've got this bike path here, or the, these bike lanes here. What we'll do is try to sneak a path right behind here. Now this, the game might not let me do, but I'm gonna do my best. Yep, it's not gonna allow it. So we'll need to put that over here, which means that the bikers are forced onto the sidewalk. I would hope that we mark that. You know, that's something that you could just say that this is part of the connection. So then we'll connect back through over here. We don't really, we have a parallel facility below the rail, but not above it. So we will add in a facility right here. <clears throat> oh, I was, so I was gonna use this row. The only problem is vanilla game mechanics. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna add it on the next street up, which will give a little bit more separation anyway and spread the love. And then we'll need to connect all the way over to here. Of course, we're gonna demolish buildings for bike lanes. City Skylines logic. <laughs> and I severed this connection before we got over to our other connection over here. So we're just gonna continue that. There we go, much better. Now it's interesting, I don't have trees going up here. This is that main road again, and that can't be pleasant. So while I'm over here, let's just go ahead and fix this. And I know coconut trees are bad, but they're small. We're gonna do it here. A little, uh, little variety. And we got a fire. <laughs> and then up and down this road, I inadvertently added some trees. I think that we're gonna go with something smaller here. Let me just add flowers. There we go. And that's nice. That's looking much better. All right. So this seems like a corridor where we're just really struggling to get goods. That's unfortunate. I'm hoping that some of that resolves. We'll check in on that in just a minute. Let's take a look again at our cyclists. So we've added this connection and you can see that now they're using it. It's huge. That is huge. Where else can we go? So we end this connection here, but do we have to? Getting back here by Five Pillars Square, I think that we're completely, completely devoid of, of bike connections. We need to be careful though, because we have one ways back here. That's probably our biggest limitation. So if we wanted to extend this, the way to do it is probably to run it through the back. So we're gonna upgrade this, which will get rid of our trees in front of our nature preserve, which stinks but it does get us bike lanes near our school, which I look at as a very positive thing. And then we'll extend this right here as well. 
So we run this down and then run this over. And then we'll upgrade this. And we've got some terrain differences here. That is unfortunate. We're going to need to run this around to make our connection. Which might actually work in our favor. That does. And the reason this works in our favor is then we're able to actually make this connection at the crosswalk. So that's a good thing. And we will add that signal there again. Prioritize those cyclists. So there we go. And I want to, I'm going to know this connection. Is it going to get used? Yep, absolutely. Build it and they will come. Now here, we've got this little district back here that we can't get to. And I think it's going to stay that way, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to work this down, but I don't want to lose all the trees on this. And this is one of those false decisions that the game makes you, makes you make that really stink. Because I, I would love to have all of the, the best connections through here and have trees. But that's not possible. So we are going to need to make some uncomfortable decisions there. Now, we should also have a north-south connection through here. And this, to me, looks like a nice road to do that on. So you'll be able to take the bike to get to the train station and connect up to the rest of the bike network. And these are parallel facilities. We'll just make that connection there. And these aren't costing us anything because bike lanes cost the same as a, a normal road, totally unrealistic. We also don't have to battle people over parking removal, which is what we're doing. We're just happily going about our day, removing parking, no one cares. That is not reality. You talk about removing this parking stall in front of this little restaurant, which I think would exist really for the supercharger right here. <laughs> so they're parked here, charging, they come over here, they have a beverage and we remove parking here. They're gonna battle us for it. So stinks, but <laughs> that's, that's the reality of it. All right, and I'm curious, we're still seeing our goods. We're still having our goods issues. I'm gonna let this run for a couple of minutes after we take a look. So our population's doing good. Our cyclists, no change. Interesting. Uh, part of this just might be the time. So we're gonna let this run for a few minutes and see if things improve. We've made a number of really important connections through here. So it should improve over time. Uh, there's obviously always more that we could do, but I think we've got to start. Uh, maybe maybe a couple more through this area though, because we have some opportunities here. So in particular, I think that we could open up more land for development back here. So I'm going to extend this down here, convert this to bike lanes, and then add a connection. And I want to add a unique building back here. This is something I've been thinking about. So in my area, a suburban community opened up a traffic park. And it's, it's interesting. It's a bike traffic park here. And in the game, if we take a look at this, it's actually a traffic traffic park. <laughs> you know? So you look at this and it says children learn about traffic in the traffic park. We're going to pretend that this is a bike traffic park. Because I don't like that. That it's not. And as a result, we'll add a ton of bike facilities back here. And I didn't connect these because I don't necessarily want to sever the connection to the road, which I think will happen. Oh, maybe it's fine. We'll leave it. It's good. And you see all the desire here to use this path as well. Very good. Very, very good. I think that all these little connections have made a huge difference. Uh, I did want to make this a park and we're going to do that, but I think we're going to hold off until the next one for that. Let's take a look at the utilization of that new path that we laid down. Wow. Just wow. So much need there. Oh, goods, goods issues over here as well, which is really unfortunate because this is close to all of our warehouses, which if we take a look, 4%, 5%, 15%, 2%, 9 So we're getting some goods being stored back here, but it's just not enough. We're certainly starting to see some traffic. And we could just start spamming these things in there. The main reason I, I think we need more warehouses is the, the freight trucks. We need more freight trucks. So that is why I've added all of these through here. And I'm going to continue adding warehouses until the issues resolved. Because I think that that is our solution. Oh, well. 
So let's let this run for just a few minutes and see how our bike network improves. Oh, there's one other thing that I saw. No, nope. well, I'm gonna false alarm, false alarm through here. So there's a lot of traffic here. You can see how heavy this is. This is all transit traffic, if I am not mistaken. So there's public transit and cargo. So there is some freight. I think we can improve all of this by removing parking here and having bus lanes. Let's look at our bus routes where they end. Looks like they end right there. So we'll go with a road diet through here. So this gives us the ability to pop through here. And then on this end, our bus routes end there as well. So we're gonna have a road diet through here. Let's make sure, yeah, all my bus lines are on. And this is just overbuilt through the park area. And it's funny because this is kind of back to the future because this is what we used to have through here. If you'll recall, a ways back. And this, I believe, is our road going in. We're going to convert this one. And then let's go ahead and add some trees through here. We'll just go with some young lindens through here. Make it seem like we just redid this. Because we did. <laughs> <laughs> and then through here we're going to keep all this capacity because this is a major freight route and you see all of those left hand turns occurring through there there's still some freight traffic here but I think it's fine and if we take a look at this that has resolved some of our capacity issues through here now look at this interesting this would be an excellent place to have a turning lane but we would lose our bike lanes and i think that we don't want to do that yeah it's a very important road uh this is green away and it has been important since the start of the city all right let's give this a couple of minutes and we'll see if things look any better look at all that activity okay so we let this run for a while let's see if things have improved i'm not yeah <laughs> It hasn't been long enough. We're, we're gonna need to take a look at this at some point in the future. It's interesting to me that we had a whole bunch of cyclists at one point and things dropped down. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion that this has something to do with our transit. And let's see if there's a way for me to see that. Is there not? There's not. <laughs> so that, that, that's, that's unfortunate because I'd really love to see if there is a correlation between transit ridership over time. Because we have a lot of transit utilization. We've got you know, 9,200 resident trips and almost 6,000 tourist trips. So that's not an insignificant amount. And I'm fine with people deciding to take transit or bike or walk. I just want them out of their cars, if, if that's at all possible. And reserve some of that capacity for freight. So... We're going to do a couple of things with our policies before we take off. And I want to take a look at these. So first of all, we have not had industrial space planning on as a citywide policy. We don't have many zoned industrial areas, but for those that we do, let's make sure that they are as efficient as they can be. Doubles the amount of goods produced by zoned industry buildings. Upkeep six cells uh, per, per zone building. Uh, fine. <laughs> take our money. The other thing. Uh, free Wi-Fi, which will reduce the amount of mail accumulation. So I want that one as well. The idea there being that uh, we are going to be receiving some of that mail by train, and I want to make sure that it is as efficient as possible. Uh, so whatever's coming off the train, I'd like it not to be not to be mail. If it's uh, an email, that's better. Uh, we also have a couple of other things. Let's see. So tourist travel card. Let's get more people into our city. So I know that this is unrelated right now, but I want to think about tourism. So I'm gonna do that and boost connections. We're gonna see what this does to our budget. And it'll be a cliffhanger for next time because I think that we are going to leave it here. Hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And uh, this is episode 85. It is on a zero or a five every fifth episode. I post these on Steam, so this will be available right now. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Take care. Bye-bye.